Welcome everyone to our video for today. We're the Dimitrov Boulay Piano Duo. My name is Dimitri Dimitrov. And my name is Alfredo Boulay. And today we're going to talk to you about the famous piece by Einaudi, Una Matina. Many of our students want to play this piece and many actually play it, but we see very often that they have problem with the lightness and the speed. If you look at the tempo indication on top, above the first bar, you're going to see quarter note that equals 80. And you're also going to see the leggero, which means light. And that's why we wanted to combine lightness and speed, because actually the piece is not that slow. It's actually quite flowing, quite moving, and that's where many of our students have troubles. This is how 80 sounds. And why is it important to discuss lightness and speed in one as one subject? It's because they influence each other. If you play very heavy, it's going to be very difficult to play fast. And if you play very light and you know how to play light, it's going to be very much easier to play fast. And what do we mean with playing light? We don't mean that we have to play everything light. We need to know exactly what to do. One of the most important things you need to know when you're going to play light is to know that music always has leaning points. And what I mean by leaning points is like, you have to think about it like a direction. You go towards somewhere and then you go back. Music always has a direction. It always has a movement towards a certain point. And so we don't want everything to sound the same. If I start playing the piece like this, becomes a little bit monotonous and boring to listen to. There is no meaning in it. That's because I don't have any leaning points. I'm not going towards anywhere and I'm also not withdrawing anything. For example, what would sound much better is if I do this. So in the second version, you could hear that there is much more variety of sound in the way I play. That's not only good for the way it sounds, but it's also very good for my technique. And so it will be very good for your technique and the speed with which you play the piece. You have much less trouble and you play much lighter and much easier. Now, where are these leaning points and how do you find them? Well, that's partly experience. It's partly playing a lot of different pieces, partly having a teacher to help you but also, for example, listening to interpretations of very good professional pianists and learning from that. Now, there's something else about these leaning points. Partly it's basic musical knowledge, but also partly it's interpretation. But today we're going to discuss these basic leaning points that are part of your musical knowledge. And our basic leaning points are going to be on every first note of every bar, on every first beat, which means that the rest we're going to play very light, but we're going to move and think towards these points. Let me show you now how that sounds. Since this is quite tricky to do, I had to come up with an exercise that could help our students to be able actually to do those leaning points, to be able to play one note and then withdraw a little bit from the sound and then again in the next bar have a little bit more sound and then withdraw the sound again. The first and most important thing to remember when you're doing exercises and you're practicing generally is to not do it too fast. You have to definitely go slower than when you're playing normally the piece. So pick a comfortable tempo and do the following exercise. We're going to have stops. So we're going to make some stops on every first beat or every leaning point like Elvira explained previously, like this. We're going to play the first note a little stronger with a little accent, which is our leaning point. Then we're going to ensure that we continue in a much softer dynamic, much softer. Here we're going to X 
accent a little bit that first note, we're going to stop on it in the second bar and we're going to ensure that we continue again very much softer than that note, like this, from the second bar. Softer. The same here. And then softer. Again, a little accent with a little gap waiting, preparing yourself to play softer and continuing softer. A little accent, preparing myself to play softer and continuing. And that will be the exercise I want you to do. Remember to always take enough time in the stops, whenever you stop on the first beat, on the first note of each bar, to ensure that you have enough time to switch the sound. Because as I said, we're going to have an accented note and then we're going to play softer after that. So you might need time. Probably, most likely, you will need time. And what we see with our students, the most common mistake we see is that they take time in the first note or even in the second note, by first note and second note I mean in the first bar and in the second bar, but then later on they start shortening the time. So for example, they start, they take time and then they play softer after the accent note. But already here, they're going to start being impatient. So we see the gap, the space between the first note and the second note starting to decrease. And that's the most common mistake you have to avoid. Do this exercise slowly, patiently, and with a long stop for several days before you start trying to decrease the stop and speed things up a bit. I like also very much, even when you're able already to make the leaning points without any stops, everything is going very well, I like to every now and then go back to the basics, go back to this exercise and do it again slowly with a long stop just to keep on improving your technique. And so this was all for our video. This was the exercise we wanted to show you because it actually really works and helps our students be able to make a contrast between a leaning note, a note that's a little bit more important and notes that are a little bit less important. For those of you who want to learn this piece but need help with that, you can check our course on Una Matina by Einaudi on Skillshare and Udemy. You can even watch it for free with a link to our Skillshare class because Skillshare provides you with a free two-month membership in which you can watch our course but also any other course on Skillshare for free for two months. And of course, once you're on Udemy and Skillshare, you can check our other courses as well. You will see also the links to those courses in the description box below. Don't forget also to follow us on Instagram and Facebook. If you liked our video, give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel if you want to be informed when we upload a new video, which is every Sunday. For us, making this video was a pleasure and we'll see you next week.